Hello and welcome back. Today's edition of Flash Fiction Fridays is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to play for you an excerpt from my audiobook, Stories of Spirits, and then an excerpt from my niece's poetry book, The Beast, The Hope, and The Only Son. If you enjoy these excerpts, please look for them on Audible or iTunes, Amazon. They're being distributed through Findaway Voices, so you'll find them on other audiobook platforms as well, and in my Gumroad store. In addition, please do keep an eye out for several nonfiction audiobooks that I have been narrating of late. Uh, There is a book about the Enneagram by David Gain. There are a couple health and dietary books by David Albert Kalinsky that I have narrated. One is Autophagy, and the other is On the Honey Diet. And now, the stories for the day. Stories of Spirits, a collection of short stories by Teresa Garcia, narrated by Teresa Garcia. Watcher. Looking over the expanse of sea, her heart was soothed by the familiar song and dance of the waves crashing on the rocks. She knew the mysteries of the foam in her bones and blood, and the secrets below those waves, and of the oyster beds that people sometimes dove down to. Breathing deeply, she took the salt air into herself, shivering delicately as the breeze lifted her whiskers upon itself and played with her mane. No one saw her from her position upon the rocks, carefully balanced and gripping strongly. The family had unknowingly called upon her for years now, but she had never shown herself to the divers, or the fishers, or the family of the local lord. She observed, protected when and where she could, and the minor things that she could provide in an answer to heartfelt prayer she granted gladly. In return... Their sincerity, gratitude, and love sustained her as surely as if she hunted. When they made offerings of food, she fed upon the energy of the food as well, imparting a bit of her own into it to sustain them when they consumed the physical portion for her and themselves. Her friends and suitors did not understand her fascination with those who lived locked in form. That did not matter to her. There were intricacies in the lives that she watched that confused and enthralled her. Even the simple act of one of the local wives in their fish preparation could absorb her. The boat that had been on its way to the oysters had stopped. The spirit turned her eyes from the waves to focus on the boat once again, watching as the women stripped down in preparation for their dive. Yesterday it had been fishers that she had watched. The first of the women slipped into the water, followed soon by the others that were diving. Sharks patrolled these waters, and some have Ito disguised as their physical cousins. It was imperative that all the divers be free of their blood, and uncut, and remain so. She had seen and tried to prevent feeding before. Sometimes she was successful. Sometimes she wasn't. The water was cold as she slipped in, but welcoming as it embraced scale and feather. The sea was one of the few physical things that she could call home. Sinking slowly, she kept pace with the delicate bodies of the human women, the thoughts and prayers of their husbands, lovers, children, and parents resounding in her mind. The ever-present whispers were something that she had grown used to. It was good to be useful, to help someone, but that emptiness from her congealment and hatching always remained. While the light from above faded, The light of the souls grew brighter to her eyes. Different orbs, infused with different colors. Circling the lights with lazy slips of tail and feet. Her eyes scanned the water for sharks, both physical and not. She was normally on good terms with them. The Samebito were attendants where she had grown. But for now, she had a duty to those that had called on her. Small hands gathered the shells resting the prizes from the rocks and then returning to the surface. Unfelt, she followed the women as they worked, 
up to the sky, then down into the plain of the sea again. This time, the guardians of the seafloor did not challenge. They were well fed from an earlier excursion and some assorted fish schools that she had driven toward them in exchange. Without blood to trigger a feed and her presence, the fragile people were safe. At last, the work ceased and the women re-entered the boat, drying and clothing themselves again. The spirit crawled onto the rocks again, absorbing the water that was on her skin into herself. A larger-than-average wave crashed upon her place, covering her in the spray. The mist possibly could have revealed her if the women had been looking her way, but they were not. The people that had been left with the boat were already steering toward the shore, having been watching the horizon. Smiling, she looked toward the horizon, spreading her wings in both welcome and warning to the spirit in those clouds. She had been found again where she had been hiding herself away. Lifting herself to the sky, she rode the winds back to the shore, watching the little boat and the people of it until they were safe in port. Settling upon her favorite perch, she watched the sky again and listened to the wind as it sighed through the pines. Glossary Samebito, Japanese shark people The Beast, the Hope, and the Only Son A collection by Elizabeth Buckley Narrated by Teresa Garcia The Beast Abandonment Have you finally abandoned me? Abandoned me in this hell? I see I'm speaking to nothing. A figment of imagination that was never real. A hope I see now that is lost. I believed in you. Now I know my pleas of help are useless. I'm not giving up on life, because I have something to live for. But I'm giving up on you. How can someone believe in a God that does not look upon you? Broken Broken and falling, what have I done? I have fallen from my soft life. The beast won't fall back. It dwells under the surface. It threatens to break free, to consume me, to take everything away. The light is fading. Is my effort worthless? Was their love worthless? Hope is a lie that doesn't stop giving. Friendship is worth nothing. Love is a broken light. Thank you for listening to Flash Fiction Fridays. If you enjoyed these, please make sure you look for them in your favorite audiobook outlet. Also, please do consider subscribing or liking, sharing, becoming a Patreon patron. That helps a lot. You also sometimes get little gifts for being a patron in addition to a tier gift. Until next time, I'm Teresa Garcia, or Amehana Arashi, and this has been Flash Fiction Fridays.